You want to be closer to your partner? If you can find some of those inner emotions and those inner experiences that, you know, we spend most of our life trying to keep inside and protect from the world. But when we want to connect with another human, it's it's pulling it out and showing it to the other person and saying, like, this was my experience. Like, this is how I felt about this. Right. And then having that partner who can take that vulnerability, who honors that vulnerability and shows you that validation and acceptance. You're watching Developing Potential with Diana Coulian. Hi, friends. and Welcome back. Today we are talking about a hot topic. How can I improve my relationship? Now, let's face it. Our life is full of relationships. And when our relationships suffer and there's conflict, it's not good. It bleeds into every other area of our life. So having good relationships is so important. And it allows us to have a happier, more fulfilling life and better connections with the people that really matter to us. And so today I'm going to share with you, this is super cool. It's called Self-Determination Theory, and it was created by Richard Ryan and Edward Desi. And they've put a lot of time and research into identifying three needs that every human being has to be motivated in a relationship. And so this applies to your intimate partner relationship. This applies to parenting your kids. It's really good there. Um, It applies to really anywhere that you have relationships, friendships. If you teach and you have students or you coach and you've got these, you know, players that you have on your team that you want to motivate them, you want to have that good relationship. And so we're going to go into the three needs that every human being has And when we can become someone who fosters these three needs in other people, our relationships flourish. The way I picture it, you know, we talk about the radiance and there's this radiance inside of all of us that gets covered up with all of this stuff, right? It gets covered up with negative emotions and conflict and all of toxic behavior and all these different things, right? Getting triggered and vices and we can bury this radiance. Now, you think of relationships, and in our relationships, are we bringing out the radiance in the other person? Are they bringing out our radiance, allowing our radiance to shine? And so when I look at these three needs, the way I visualize it is when we're fulfilling our partner's three needs, we're really uncovering that radiance, and they're doing the same for us. So let's jump right into what these three needs are. So we can start thinking about how we can better provide these for our partner and maybe looking for where we're lacking these in some of our relationships. So the first need that we all have in relationship is the need for autonomy. And so really this this feeling and this ability to make choices and the ability to behave according to our personal values in a situation. And so being self-led and feeling that we have a choice in things, not feeling that we're being coerced, we're being controlled, we're being told that we have to do this or you can't do that or you need to act outside of your values, right? This is a basic human need to be able to behave according to our personal values. So how does this show up in relationship? So if I'm going to be fulfilling this need for autonomy in my partner, What I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to understand this person's interests, their preferences, and their perspectives. So I'm curious, like, what are their personal values? I want to know them. I want to honor them. So being open to knowing this other person and then responding to them, responding to when they're going to share something or when they're they're talking about their preference or their choice, encouraging that in the other person so that the other person is feeling this sense of autonomy, right? So that's the first basic need in relationship is fostering your partner's autonomy and then having them foster your autonomy. So this is the opposite of trying to control someone. And so, you know, we we think about parenting, you know, there's situations where, guess what? We do have to tell our kids what to do. So how do you foster someone's autonomy 
when you, you're you giving them a directive. And so something you can do with even really small kids is making it a choice. And I used to do this with my kids all the time, even if it's just, you know, you have to get up and get dressed. Well, you can pick out between these two shirts or whatever it is, giving them the feeling of ownership in whatever they're doing, what to whatever degree you can. We can always put parameters around it with, with kids to give them some some autonomy, to give them some ownership of choosing what they want. And it's a lot easier in like your intimate partner relationship to sit back and be like, hey, like what what's their perspective on this, right? And not feeling that you need to control the situation. Okay, the second basic human need that comes up in all of our relationships is the need for competence. And so what this looks like is to feel that we are effective and thriving in the relationship. And so we're feeling that we're challenged, but we're not overwhelmed. And so there's a really simple way to do this in relationships, and that's providing these clear and consistent expectations and structure. And I feel like this is where a lot of us kind of get off track in our relationships is not clearly defining what our expectations are, what are what are our needs in a relationship, and communicating that effectively to our partner so they understand, like, here's how I can do well here. I get it, right? Here's the rules or here's the here's the structure that I need in this relationship. And I feel like I can do well at it. And then when they are doing that, giving them that affirmation that like, yes, you're competent, you're doing good in this. And so another way to really foster that need for competence is helping the person to not be overwhelmed and instead helping them to mobilize their resources, right? And so just supporting your partner in finding that competence in what they're doing. But I really think that biggest part is defining expectations. And it, it, that goes back to communication. Because when, if I have the expectation that Bedros is going to take the trash out, but I don't clearly tell him like, hey, I don't like taking the trash out. I, you know, yes, I clearly could lift it. I'm, I, I work out. I go to the gym. But I don't want to. This is something that like, could you help me out? If you could do that, that would just make me feel taken care of and supported, right? But if I don't communicate that and then it doesn't happen, but then I just give signals and signs like you're disappointing me, you're not displaying competence in this relationship, that's when things will start to disintegrate in the relationship. Okay, the third basic human need that we have in all relationships is the need for connection. And this one makes a lot of sense, right? feeling a sense of belonging, feeling a sense of intimacy with the other person, and having this strong and stable connection between the two of you. So how do we establish connection with our partner or whoever it is that we want to build a stronger relationship with? Um, Getting involved with understanding their interests, right? Just directing energy towards that person so that they feel seen they feel accepted by you. A big part of this connection is making it non-contingent, right? You know, we've all all been in those relationships where it felt like you had to earn approval or you had to earn some kind of reward. You know, and going back to raising kids, this self-determination theory has shown that when we try to punish or reward and we try to motivate kids that way, it doesn't work. Because we're putting our connection to them with a contingency. And so true connection, when we truly feel connected with another person, it's without these contingencies, right? We know that they have our best interest in mind and they're, they're interested in us aside from whatever it is that we're doing. And so one of the best ways to really build connection is to communicate emotionally relevant things about yourself to the other person and for them to really receive these and accept them and validate them. So this is kind of like a basic way to build more connection and intimacy, which can be uncomfortable, right? Like to share emotionally vulnerable things about yourself to another person and for them to accept that 
is this building block for creating a strong connection. And so that's a great place to start if you're like, hey, okay, my relationships, we've got autonomy, like no one's trying to control the other person. Um, We have competence. We feel like, hey, we're both doing well here. Like we're both, everybody's happy in the relationship. Nobody's dropping the ball. But then you're like, gosh, we just don't have a deep enough connection. Like you're looking for that deeper connection. Well, the great place to start is really going inside and thinking like, well, what can I share? How can I share something that's really emotionally important or relevant to me? And then having that partner who's going to listen and validate and show you acceptance. And so that's just one step. And every time that you can have an exchange like that in a partnership, you build a deeper bond and a deeper connection. So to review, we've got these three basic needs that every single human has. And when these needs are met in relationship, we're happy, we're motivated in the relationship. And when they're being violated, we're we're not happy in the relationship. Things are going downhill. Things are breaking apart. um, Things are disintegrating. And so that autonomy, which is really supporting the other person's personal values and giving them choices, giving them a say in things, allowing the other person to feel that they have ownership over the different aspects of the relationship or different scenarios that come up in your life. The second one being that competence, like feeling like, yeah, I'm doing a good job in this. I know how to do a good job. I know what a good job looks like. And so this is really communicating our expectations communicating the structure for the relationship. Um, You know, in in parenting, this is really communicating the expectations to your kids, right? Here's what you can do to really be doing well and then reinforcing it when the person is making that effort with letting them know you're doing a great job, right? Allowing them to bask in that feeling of competence. That's a basic human need and that's really a gift, And you think in our intimate partner relationships, like giving your partner that acknowledgement that like, hey, you're doing a good job. Like, I see what you're doing. You're fulfilling one of their basic needs. And by doing that, like their satisfaction in the relationship is going up. Their motivation to fulfill your three needs is going up. And so it's a wonderful gift that you're giving to the other person but you're also giving yourself a gift because you're just improving the connection that you have. And so that third basic need is connection, right? And I think, you know, with relationships, we kind of, we always usually think about connection, but then the autonomy and the competence, maybe we don't think of as much. But the connection, you know, is that sense of intimacy, that sense of belonging with one another, really just feeling that the other person accepts you and wants you. Um, And then, you know, doing this without contingencies. So doing this really with purity of heart and the way to build that intimacy, that, that emotional bond is really sharing emotionally relevant information, which, you know, especially for men, this can be difficult. Or it's like, oh, I have to talk about my feelings. Like, yeah. You want to be closer to your partner? Yeah, you do. If you can find some of those those inner emotions and those inner experiences that, you know, we spend most of our life trying to keep inside and protect from the world. But when we want to connect with another human, it's, it's pulling it out and showing it to the other person and saying, like, this was my experience. Like, this is how I felt about this, right? And then having that partner who can take that vulnerability because it is vulnerable. I think that's why we avoid it so much in relationships. But when you have that supportive partner who who honors that vulnerability and shows you that validation and acceptance, and that's like magic for creating a strong, connected bond with one another. So the opposite of somebody who's really fulfilling these three needs would be someone who's controlling someone who has unreasonable and unclear expectations but you just know you're not meeting them 
And then someone who's rejecting of you, right? Someone who you don't feel really wants to be bonded and connected. So that's it, guys. Who knew it was so simple to really improve all of our relationships? And so our extra credit for this week is really evaluating all of our different relationships for these three needs. So looking for autonomy, like where in this relationship am I taking choice away from the other person? Or where do I feel that my choices are being taken away or what maybe where my personal values are being compromised, right? Looking for these, these compromises in autonomy and, and ironing those out. Competence, right? Maybe there's relationships you have in your life where expectations are just not clear or maybe the expectations don't match each other. And so one person's doing more, expecting more than the other person. So a lot of this is communicating about those expectations and then giving positive affirmations and positive acknowledgement when the other person's really doing well and really being competent. And then the third one being that connection. So looking for where in your relationships could you build a deeper connection, right? So friends, I hope that this was interesting to you. And again, this was all coming from self-determination theory. So you can look it up if it's kind of sparked a little interest in you to learn more because we can apply this really across the board. I've, I've really honed it in on relationships here, but really in so many different aspects of our life, we have these three basic needs, right? This autonomy, competence, and connection. And we really need that for mental health. We need that for happiness. We need that for fulfillment. So really look in your life and where can you improve upon these needs for yourself and also for the others in your life who you care about. So thank you for watching. If you like it, please subscribe, drop me a comment, and I will be back next week with another episode. Thanks for watching Developing Potential with Diana Cooley.